Hi everyone, it's Mitch. It's Monday, March 23rd, and uh, first weekend of the tournament was over. A uh, lot of excitement in that first weekend, and uh, you know, the thing is that there's always a lot of excitement, a lot of upsets in that first round, but when you look at the board, four number one seeds all make it through. Four number two seeds all made it through. Four number three seeds all made it through, and two of the four number four seeds made it through one number five, and then the one big upset, a number 12 seed. And that number 12 seed was Arizona, who was the national champion there not too many years ago. And, uh, you know, always a big-time program. A lot of people thought they shouldn't be in the tournament this year. A lot of people thought they should. Um, you know, uh, uh, of the Pac-10 teams, that they're, they're, they're the ones uh, who, are, who are standing. So uh, what does that create? That creates some great matchups for, for the next round. These are like, you know, college football. These are like the games that you'd want to see. In college basketball, the teams kind of tend to play each other, you know, throughout the year. So you get to see a lot more of these different types of matchups. In college football, you do too. But in, in college basketball, um, you know, it just seems to happen more often. It's just because there's more games. And, um, you know, so, some of the great games we have, you know, for, for Thursday, Purdue against Connecticut, Robbie Hummel, Machine to be, um, you know, stars and stars, uh, should, should be a great game. Then we got Xavier and uh, Pittsburgh, um, you know, uh, another one versus four, Xavier. Uh, it just seems every year they're in the Sweet 16. Pitt, they seem to always have trouble uh, when it comes to tournament time. After that, Missouri and Memphis, uh, just a classic, uh, you know, college basketball battle there. And then, uh, you know, Villanova and Duke, and, uh, you know, the, I, I expect to see, uh, you know, the uh, the scoreboard be lit up kind of like the gas pumps were uh, about a year ago at this time. Uh, then, as we move into Friday, Arizona taking on Louisville in the uh, early game. Arizona kind of the upset team. Louisville, the overall number one. And, uh, you know, the time's not... Not really playing like it, but, you know, you can't argue with a team that just keeps on winning. Uh, Syracuse then taking on Oklahoma. Syracuse, uh, a lot of people's pick uh, to at least make to the Final Four out of that bracket. Uh, Oklahoma, a dominating performance by, by Blake Griffin. Uh, boy, he's just a handful, and uh, maybe I underestimated the Sooners a little bit in this tournament. Uh, Kansas taking on uh, Michigan State. Kansas last year's champion, and, uh, you know, they, they, they've been, uh, you know, not, not overly impressive, but you can't argue with a team that's, you know, they're in the Sweet 16 and uh, one game away from the, from the Elite Eight and, uh, you know, two games away from the Final Four. Uh, after that, you know, rounding it out on uh, Friday night, Gonzaga, North Carolina, should be just a monster game. Uh, made it pretty clear. I'm, I'm all over Gonzaga in this tournament. I really like them to make the Final Four and to beat the Tar Heels in that game. Um, We'll, uh, we'll see what happens on Friday night. Uh, the heels are going to have uh, plenty of time to prepare for it, plenty of time for those injuries to heal. But, uh, you know, Gonzaga, they're, they're a great team. They showed some real grittiness, some real toughness, you know, against Western Kentucky, who uh, matched up pretty well against a lot of teams in this tournament. In any event, this is Mitch. Thanks for joining me. We'll be doing previews of the games all week long. I just wanted to give a nice little overview today of the Sweet 16. Have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'll see you in the forums.